hello friends i'll be talking on this uh, topic resistance to antifungals so this was a part of a panel discussion that i did in ranchi recently so it, it's just a brief overview for all the trainees to understand the different uh, mechanisms as to how uh, resistance develops uh, from uh, to antifungals by candida species or the fungi so it will be a very brief video around 3 to 4 minutes so i'll just take you through Uh, how uh, antifungals act different antifungals act on the fungi so when you look at the mechanism of action so this is a schematic representation as to how the fungal cell wall and cell membrane looks so as you see all this big area is the fungal cell wall and uh, all the yellow ones you see here are all the ergosterols that form the part of the cell wall and the violet small things that you see here are all the sterols okay, so these are important for you to recognize because some of the antifungals act on these and this is the beta 1 glucan synthase okay, so this is the one which uh, leads to the production of beta 1 3 glucan so so this is some because when you talk about echinocandins they basically act by inhibiting this beta 1 glucan synthase so when we talk about azoles ergosterol or uh, the fluconazole or any of the azoles so they basically act by inhibiting the ergosterol production so ergosterol is this yellow ones which i said so all the azoles that you use for antifungals act by inhibiting the synthesis of this ergosterol and the reason why we are talking on this is the resistance to antifungal agents by the fungi is happens through these uh, mutations in these ergosterols so which i will be talking about and uh, the the blue ones which i said are the sterols the polyins the amphotericin b that you use they act by binding to these sterols and they form a membrane and uh, they help in inhibition of formation of this cell membrane so the amphotericin b which belong to this polyins act by binding to the sterols and inhibit the production of cell membrane and cell wall synthesis and the echinocandins that you use all the anidula fungi and casco fungi and mica fungi so they act by inhibiting this enzyme beta 1 3 glucan synthase and this is an enzyme which leads to the production of these uh, beta 1 3 glucan which is a constituent of the cell wall so these are the in brief the mechanism as to how these antifungal agents act and the resistance to these antifungal agents be it uh, fluconazole be it polyins or echinocandins also happen due to changes in this ergosterol changes in the polyins and certain changes that happen in the glucan beta 1 glucan so that's what we we'll look so this is another schematic representation say so as you see polyins they act on uh, these cell membranes and uh, echinocandins help in prevention of uh, cell wall synthesis and the azoles so they act in this uh, cytoplasm area and the uh, anti metabolites 5 fluorocytosine acts on the dna so this is the just a schematic representation of the different sites on which antifungal agents act so we we'll talk about resistance to uh, polyins so polyins is amphotericin b so this is just a schematic representation so if you see this is the this uh, violet one is the polyins so as i said polyins or amphotericin act by binding to sterols and the sterols are the blue thing so polyins act by binding to these sterols so when there is resistance to polyins then there is alteration in this uh, for structure of these sterols there is an alternate sterols that forms because there is a change in the sterols or which we call is an alternate sterols so the poly the amphotericin b or the polyins fail to bind to this sterols and that is where they develop the resistance pattern because for the polyins to be effective they need to bind effectively to sterols because there is changes in the sterols which is alternate sterols polyins fail to bind and they fail to cause uh, antifungal action so this is the way polyins act and how does azole resistance azole resistance happens with two three mechanisms one is drug target alteration so when you so this yellow one or the orange one of the azoles so they bind to this uh, um ergosterol so basically what happens is there is a mutation in the ergosterol because the yellow ones which i said were the er ergosterols when there is mutations again there is change in the morphology of the ergosterols and the mutations have been found in the ergosterols 3 6 11 so those are the numbers they have given for the types of ergosterol 
because there is a change in the morphology of ergosterol, the azoles fail to bind to the ergosterol and antifungal action does not happen effectively. So this is, uh, this is called as drug target alteration. Then there is something called drug target overexpression. So here what happens is, as you see, the azole is binding to ergosterol because there is overexpression of ergosterol. There is a lot of expression. So, and uh, you have inability of uh, azoles to bind to all these overexpressed ergosterols. And by doing this, they develop resistance to the azoles. Okay. So basically it is change in the morphology or alternate sterol formation, resistance to the polyins and target morphology. If the ergosterol morphology changes, so obviously azoles become ineffective or overexpression of these ergosterols so azoles uh, fail to bind to all the overexpressed uh, ergosterols, leading to resistance. And there is a mechanism called efflux pump overexpression. I'm sure most of the trainees would have heard uh, the resistance to any uh, drug that happens, like uh, antibiotic. There is a reflux pumps which will throw out the antibiotic. So even with regards to antifungal agents, so the uh, and the resistance to the azole, there is efflux pump. Uh, overexpression. So there is mutations in these efflux pumps, uh, and these mutations have been found in TSE1 and MRR1. So which basically cause uh, you know, overexpression of these efflux pumps. When there is overexpression of the efflux pump, there is increased throat of this uh, antifungal agents that happen. So as you see, there is pumping out of the antifungal agents, and they become ineffective and resistant develops. And uh, overexpression happens in these two uh, different. Uh, component CDR1 and MDR1. So this is just more detailing as to the type of mutations that happen and type of overexpression of this uh, efflux pump that happens. So this is so these are the three mechanisms for azole resistance. One is drug target overexpression and drug target alteration and with efflux pump overexpression. With polyenes, there is alternate uh, sterols that forms and uh, that alternate sterols, polyins fail to bind, and there is resistance to the polyins that develops. So what about echinocandin resistance? Echinocandin resistance also is very similar to azole drug target alteration. So echinocandins, there is mutation in the FKS1 gene uh, within this uh, ergosterol. So, and within this beta-1 glucon, and this mutation in FKS1 again changes the morphology. So the green one is echinocandins, it needs to bind to the beta-1 glucon. So the binding is not happening because there is mutation in the ks one g and resistance to the echinocandin happens. So this is in general. So when we talk about resistance to antifungals, there is something called intrinsic resistance and acquired resistance. So intrinsic resistance is there are certain fungi which are intrinsically resistant to azoles. Like when we talk about candida cruzi or candida glabrata, they're intrinsically resistant to the azole. And we saw the candida lucitane is intrinsically resistant to amphotrophin B, polyenes. So that is intrinsic. So these are what we are talking is acquired resistance, where because of the exposure to the azoles, uh, so they develop these mutations within these ergosterols, or there is overexpression of the efflux pumps, or there is mutations in the FKS1 gene. All this leads to the resistance to azoles, echinocandins, or to the polyenes. So, uh, so cellular stress response is another mechanism that happens. So in cellular stress response, so basically you need a stress response to maintain the integrity of cell wall. So this is what we see. Uh, so the cellular stress response leads to the integrity of the fungal cell wall. So when, when, when there is this uh, cellular stress response, uh, so there, there is this uh, protein kinase which maintains the cell wall integrity. And then there is this chaperonin containing TCP1, which tends to maintain the cell wall integrity. This, this is integrity of the fungal cell wall that is maintained. So when these get impaired, then obviously there is some sort of a resistance that develops. And there is this transcription factor. So all this helps in sort of maintaining the cell wall integrity. What happens is when there is a lot of stress within the body, that is when the fungi thrives. So which means the fungi to thrive and for the cell wall integrity to maintain, it needs all these elements, all these proteins that get generated during the stress, which maintain the strength of the fungi. 
Okay, so this also leads to the resistance pattern because the cell, the basic fungi becomes much stronger in the presence of cellular stress response because of these proteins that get uh, that get released, which tends to strengthen the fungi. So this is also one important mechanism they've identified. It means our body is stressed. There is more stress within us. There are proteins produced which strengthen the fungi and the cell wall integrity and the cell membrane integrity get strengthened because of these proteins that get released during the stress that happens. So this is something new for all of, our, uh, all of us, which we can appreciate. So in cellular stress response, they've identified this protein called HSP90 protein. And this protein is sort of uh, regulated by these two proteins, lysine B acetylase and protein kinase CK2. So this is a protein which gets released when there is a cellular stress. And these are regulated by lysine B acetylase. And this HSP90 regulates the activity of calcineurin and the PKC1 cell cascade. And these two together are important in maintaining the cell wall integrity and cell membrane integrity of the fungi. So basically, these are all the proteins that get released when there is a cellular stress. And these proteins are essential to strengthen the fungi, which leads to resistance of the fungi to the antifungal agents that we provide. It means the more stress the cell is under, these proteins get produced, they strengthen the cell wall integrity and cell membrane integrity, and the effectiveness of the antifungal agents get weakened because of more strengthening of this fungal cell wall and fungal cell membrane. So this is, so this is the beautiful explanation that came in two of the recent review articles, which I reviewed, uh, which came in 2020 and 21. So it is quite a detailed analysis of all the mutations that happened, but I've just given you a brief overview uh, on the, in a simplified way as to how the resistance patterns work. So, for, so to summarize, so basically polyenes, uh, the, uh, the resistance of the fungi to the polyenes happen because of the alternate sterol formation and the binding of polyenes to the sterols does not happen. And when we talk about azole resistance, so there is the drug target uh, sort of a mutation that happens. So and that is when the azoles become ineffective or there is an overexpression of the ergosterols when the azoles become ineffective, or there is an efflex pump overexpression that happens. When we talk about echinocantin resistance, again, there is a mutation to the FKS1 gene, uh, and there is a change in the morphology, and uh, there is a failure of binding of echinocantins uh, to the beta-1 group 1. And this cellular stress response produces various proteins which strengthen the cell wall integrity and cell membrane integrity, which increases its ability to become resistant to the antifungal agent. So that is in brief for all the trainees. If you know this much, this is more than enough about how fungi develops resistance to antifungal agents. So thank you. Thank you, one and all.